Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today we are going to talk about pattern in Rhino 3D software. There's a plugin called Paneling Tool, and I'd like to show you how to create six different patterns with this awesome tool. Are you ready? Let's get started. For this uh, demonstration, we would like to use the paneling tool, which you can see right here on the top. If you are using Rhino 7, you should have already have this plugin installed in there. If you are using something in the older version like Rhino 5 and Rhino 6, you can go to fullforrhino.com and on the very first uh, row, you're going to see this paneling tool. Under this, they have a different version for you to download. So they have up to Rhino 5 uh, for Windows and Rhino 6 for Windows. And by the way, this is only applied for the Windows. Uh, if any of you can find a Mac, uh, please uh, share with us so we can all work together uh, within two systems. All right, so once you install this paneling tool, or if you're using Rhino 7, then you will have all this option right there. We are not going to go one by one, but just want to give you a short introduction to see if this is a good tool for you to explore even more. So that's starting from the scratch. All right. So for us to build any of the pattern, we will need to build the surface first. And you can create any of the surface you want. Um, I was using sort of a surface like this one to create this. So let me try something else uh, to show you something differently. So I'm going to draw something going up and down like this and drawing another one going down and up like this, for example. And then I'm going to move in one of them there and simply let's just go ahead to um, using the loft and we're going to loft between here and here. All right. So now we have this surface right there. Now, this is the surface we're going to apply different type of the texture to apply in uh, to with the uh, paneling tool. You need to have the grid structure in there. So we need to create a grid from this surface. So underneath here, you have a create paneling grid and you have the one that's called surface uh, domain number. And what that is, it's going to ask you, say, which surface you want to create in the pattern. And we want to pick up this one. When you hit enter, now this is where that you want to pay attention. It says 10 by 10, which means I have U, 10, V, and 10. So if that works for you, that's fine. Let's uh, click enter right here. Now you can see that the point coming out, this grid point does follow with my curve. All right, let's move this one right there and let's do something slightly different. I'm going to rebuild those two curves, both of them into 10 points. All right, so if you turn on the control point, you can see they align. All right, so we're going to use the same command for loft. We're going to loft from this one to this one. Notice that this line is more straight. It's because the line will align in with your point. Right. And then so let's click OK. If we are using this surface, let's say we want to use paneling tool. We want to create paneling grid and we want to pick this one's called surface domain number. And we use exactly the same. Now you see the difference is like this is more regular to start with. And this is already have a bigger deviation is because the first control points here, the second ones here on this curve. And on the other side, it's more close distance. That's why it's a bit irregular. So I don't like this one there. So I'm going to delete this one. OK, so now we have this grid there. Let's give it a try. We're going to come to the paneling tool. And you have something called paneling from grid. And we want to create the 2D grid. All right. It's going to ask you on the top right here, like select paneling point. And that's this point that we want to select and hit enter like that. Now it's going to ask you, which is your base curve? And we're going to pick up this surface. I'm sorry, which is your base surface? And we're going to pick up this. And very quickly, you see, this is some sort of a pattern going on here. Like this one is a hexagon. So how am I going to change in the pattern? If you, well, first of all, if you want them to be more tight, 
the UMV number you need to increase when you're creating the grid. The second thing is right here on the top, you have pattern. And on this pattern right here, you got one, two, three, four, five, six pattern. Uh, it's preset. So let's go ahead to creating the first one. It's called box. As you can see, it's really like great looking things. And what it does is you give you those curve right here. Okay. And we're going to do it again. The second, we're going to try all of them. So bear with me. Uh, we're going to pick up this. The second pattern is called triangle. And this is a, a lot of people like to use this. You can also use this as a guideline to cut your stone and to set it into a certain uh, triangle way if you want to. All right. So then we're going to pick up this over here. The third one, we're going to do it again. Pick up your grid, enter, pick up your surface. The third one that we have, it's called diamond. Right. So then we've got this like diamond structure. I'm going to bring out there. Uh, if you do want to have the edge to go with it, you might want to duplicate this curve. And when you move it, move it together. But here I'm just want to show you how to make in this pattern. The fourth one, we got this grid. Enter. And with the surface, we're going to come in into wave. So then you have this wave pattern. I'm going to move in the pattern right there. There are two more. Uh, this one, hit enter, and I'm going to hit on this surface. And we have the last two ones. One is called break. It's really similar with uh, the rectangle uh, or the square that we have there, but it's more, it's like off center on each of the row. Okay, very last one that we have degree. And we have the surface and the very last one is hexagon. All right. So what are we going to do with those curves that the pattern that we have creating from the surface? You can simply just pipe it. I'm going to pick up everybody and we are going to use the pipe command and for something 0.5, then we will get something like this. As you can see, it is like really interesting pattern. If you take a look on the render view, you're going to see some like harsh line in there, right? But now if you are using Rhino 7, let's go ahead to um, go back to the ghost view. And I'm going to pick up all the curve. And we're going to move it down here. All right. The second thing that we can do, if you are using a Rhino 7, you do have the option for the sub D. And you can come into the sub D option. You have this one's called sub the multi pipe. Um, and then you want to pick up those curve and hit enter. Then you will get something like this really quick. And the differences between is uh, if you take a look on the render view, you're going to see like this one, it has uh, in between the joint is really smooth surface and it's all linked together, something like this. Do you like this pattern? Leave in the comment, let me know what you think. Hope you find it is really useful to use in your design. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.